video, we are going to calculate odds ratio for a cohort study using the example shown here. Let's say you have 150 smokers, which is your exposed group, and 150 non-smokers, which is your unexposed group. And you are following these patients over time to see how many develop lung cancer. At the end of your study, you see that 50 patients develop lung cancer in the smoker group and 22 patients develop lung cancer in the non-smoker group. The first thing you want to do is create a two by two table. I like to put outcome up top and exposure to the left and simply write yes or no. So if you notice, the outcome of interest has to be a yes or no question. So you can't look at a mean value or a continuous var variable. You would have to be looking at a yes or no question. So did the patient develop the outcome? Yes or no. So for example, a study looking at the average weight lost uh, in a group that was taking a weight loss medication compared to no weight loss medication, you would not be able to calculate odds ratio for that type of study because it is not looking at proportions, it is not looking at an outcome that has a yes or no answer. So that would be your categorical variable. The only time you can do an odds ratio or risk ratio is if you have a categorical variable. In this case, did the patient develop lung cancer, yes or no? That makes sense, that's what we're looking at, and so I can indeed make a two by two table and calculate an odds ratio. Now, since this is a cohort study, I can also calculate a risk ratio, but we're gonna do odds ratio in this case. So I have 150 smokers. So again, smokers and non-smokers has to do with exposed versus unexposed. So. I have 150 patients that were exposed. And so my total is going to be 150. And then I have 150 patients that were not exposed. And so that's gonna be this 150 down here. So as you can see, the totals are going outside of the table and not inside the table. Now 50 developed lung cancer. so. 50 out of my 150 smokers develop lung cancer, and I'm putting it under yes for developing the outcome, compared to 22 of my 150 non-smokers who develop lung cancer. The next thing I like to do is I like to label my boxes A, B, C, D. Now in a cohort study, if you recall, we are starting with the exposed and the unexposed and looking at the odds or the risk of developing the outcome of interest. So for that reason, you want to think of a cohort study as reading your table from left to right. And this is going to make more sense when we compare it to a case control. But if you pay attention to what we're doing here, we're reading our table from left to right. So in order to calculate my odds ratio, I'm going to do A over B divided by C over D. I am not using totals when I calculate odds. Again, with an odds ratio, you do not use your total numbers. You use the odds of the outcome versus no outcome. So you're looking at what's actually inside your boxes. So you might be wondering, well, these boxes are missing some information. So go ahead and fill in the two boxes that are missing B and D and calculate your odds ratio. And in the next video, we will discuss this calculation.